Hey everyone, it's Rowie Kiwi, and in today's video, I'm going to be making watercolor paints from old eyeshadows I have. This is kind of like a trend I've noticed on TikTok and YouTube a little bit. Um, I'll, I can't remember everybody's usernames, but uh, yeah, I, I, it's just something that's been going around, so I wanted to try it. I have a ton of old eyeshadows that need to be thrown away, so why not make them useful? Uh, besides that, some of them are really expensive, and it hurts my frugal little heart to have to throw them away. So yeah, here we are making watercolor paints out of them, or at least attempting to. I'm gonna go ahead and take the chance to apologize now for any background noise you hear. Uh, you can probably hear my son breathing and chewing on his pacifier. He's currently taking a nap in my arms while I record this audio, and uh, this is probably the only chance I'm going to get to do it, so here we are. The first few clips here that you're watching are of me making the watercolor binder. I used a recipe from Arla Bean's video from her also making watercolor paints, um, and I used her watercolor binder recipe. The gum arabic proved to be harder to incorporate into the boiling water than I anticipated, and you can see me kind of smushing the clumps to try and get them to integrate a little bit better. Uh, it didn't work so well, so I kind of end up giving up and just waiting for them to dissolve on their own and uh, move on to adding the rest of the ingredients. So there's glycerin, there's natural honey, gum arabic, clove oil, and water. And I believe that's all of the ingredients that I use to make this watercolor binder. I'll link Audra Eclair's video because she goes into depth way more than I could. And she's also way more experienced than I am. So her video will be way more useful than mine. My video is less of a tutorial and more of a my experience making watercolors for the first time. And let me tell you, it did not go as well as I was hoping, but that's okay. Here we're almost done making the watercolor binder. I'm adding in the clove oil, which is the last step, mixing it all together, and then I'm popping it into a recycled uh, mason jar. These have peaches in it and putting it in the fridge overnight. By the next morning, everything was fully dissolved and incorporated, and I put it in this little travel shampoo bottle just to, you know, have a little bit ready for making the watercolors. So here's my crazy old wet and wild palette. It is probably quite literally 10 years old and I am chopping up the first color. It's kind of like a metallic, like dusty purple color. Yeah, I just chopped it up really finely to get it ready to be mixed up with the watercolor binder. I tried to make a little divot in the powder to I don't know, contain the binder a little bit. It did not work, and I also underestimated how much binder I was going to need initially. You'll see me come back and add binder a few times throughout this process because I wasn't really sure how much to use initially. Um, after a little while, you know, I got the hang of it, but these first couple I made were definitely experimental at best. Um, and like I said in the beginning, they didn't turn out quite as well as I uh, would have liked. Here I've begun the mulling process and pulling out stray cat hairs that may be in it. I think this is where I went wrong and kind of uh, and why the paints didn't turn out as well as I would have liked. I don't think I mulled them quite enough. Um, I think I needed to mold them for a little longer to better incorporate the pigments because you'll see when I kind of swatch them that they're pretty grainy and not very densely pigmented. This could also be because the eyeshadows that I used were super cheap and didn't have a lot of good pigment in them to begin with, so it could just be a combination of factors, honestly. But I did notice um, after these first couple of paints I made, I made a few more off camera and they came out a bit better than these ones did. So, not sure. Um, but I did mold the later ones a little bit more just to make sure that the pigments were fully incorporated. 
I guess we can talk a little bit about how long each of these paints took me to make. They took about 35 minutes each to make, and I have the videos sped up quite a bit, and uh, the clips are about four minutes each of the paints, so that's start to finish time from chopping up the, the eyeshadows to mulling the paints, 35 minutes. And really hats off to people who make these paints for a living, handmade watercolor paints that is, because my arms were killing me after just making two of these paints. It is quite a workout and uh, I didn't even mold them long enough. So really it's a, it is a labor of love, I believe. It is now significantly later in the day and I have changed locations entirely. So let's finish up this audio. Yeah, so just about all of the supplies I'm using in this video are from uh, the craft store or Amazon. Um, I tried to buy everything like physically for this video, but finding the gum arabic powder proved to be challenging and also the glass molar. I've seen some people use uh, other items other than like the, the glass molar, which is, you know, specifically made for mulling paints, but um, I decided to just get the glass molar, and I already had the marble slab and the palette knives and the paint brushes, so, um, I did have to buy the, like I said, the gum arabic and all that. Here is where the watercolors kind of, uh, proved to be a little bit disappointing. That first swatch is just with the big mop brush. I actually used the mop brush to clean up the mess on the marble slab. Honestly, I probably couldn't be using any worse brushes to do this. Uh, even though the brushes specifically say that they're for watercolor paint and painting with watercolor, uh, I haven't used these ones before and they kind of sucked. Obviously the square or flat brush uh, wasn't very good, but it was the only brush I had nearby at the time. So, uh, oh well, the swatches were a little wonky. Maybe that's why the watercolor paint didn't seem so good. I figure after they dry out in the pans, um, I'll re-swatch them and see if that, if that has any difference to the quality of the paint. I don't know. I'm still thinking it's because I didn't mold them long enough though. Even though these paints didn't turn out how I was hoping they would, they're a little underwhelming. I'm still going to continue to practice with some of the cheaper eyeshadows that I have and hopefully I'll get the hang of it so I can use my fancier more expensive palettes to make like a full set of watercolor paints with them. Uh, that's kind of the goal you know at the end of the day is to make some nice watercolors that I might actually use so stay tuned for that hopefully. <laughs> I'm definitely really glad that I started off with this super cheap Wet n Wild palette instead of my expensive palettes though because it definitely would have felt a lot worse that they didn't turn out as nicely as I was hoping they would if I had used the expensive eyeshadows first. Really the problem with these paints is just the opacity issue and that they definitely have a lot of texture and grain left in them. I would definitely say that they are granulating watercolor paints, which I know some people like a whole lot. That's not really my style. I kind of prefer a smoother finish with watercolor paint, so I do believe that is a byproduct of not mulling long enough because I didn't grind the pigments down enough with the mulling and uh you know so they they granulate when they dry on the paper so as I get a little more experienced with this process I think I can kind of work that out but to be honest some pigments no matter how much you due to them, I think we'll still granulate like that. So it'll be a lot of trial and error, I think, until I get a nicer finished product. All right, so final thoughts as we near the end of the video here. My, you know, 
first conclusion is that I did not mold these paints long enough and that's why they did not turn out as well as I was hoping they would. I've said this a bunch of times now so we'll just like keep going. Will I try and make more eyeshadow watercolor paints in the future? Yes. I really want to try again and get a better finish so I will continue to practice with the cheap eyeshadows before I work with my expensive ones to make watercolor paint. Honestly, I think this is just the best practice with anything. Uh, always start off with cheap stuff before you jump head in and do the expensive stuff. So that's the that's the plan. I'm not sure how long it'll take me to, you know, get to the plan to make it come to fruition. I've got a lot of other stuff going on. Like this video alone has taken me so long to finish just because finding the time to do it has been not the easiest. But hopefully in the near future I'll have a little more free time to do stuff like this um, and to just do art in general. I've kind of been gearing more towards digital art because it's easier to pick up and set down if I have to jump up quickly to handle my infant. There's definitely been a bit of an adjustment period, but it is getting better every day. And hopefully here soon, things can get back to a little bit more normal for me. Here are some uh, close-up shots of some extra swatches I did of the paint where you can kind of see the texture issue going on and uh, the finish of the paints a little bit. I know the lighting's not the best, but you can definitely see the granulation going on. All right, I hope you guys have kind of enjoyed my little rambly eyeshadow to bad watercolor paint video. Hopefully you'll catch the next one. Bye.